Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Grammar Startup Connections, and I'm back with my, which is already, I believe, eighth bootcamp. And uh, yeah, today we are going to do this earlier than usual because I have <laughs> other plans in the second half of the day. And uh, I've chosen a topic which was proposed in one of our. Uh, to be honest, I don't remember, was it a bootcamp? Actually, one of my previous editions of my bootcamps or one of my previous streams, somebody was asking in the chat, could I actually do a Cecilia and Tamanov? And I thought, I mean, why not? Because Cecilia and Tamanov has been a main weapon for me for when playing with black against E4. And I've been scoring quite well with it. And I thought, okay, I mean, it might be an interesting idea to share with you uh, what I typically play, what are the uh, standard ideas, and if you're not playing Cecilia and Tamanov, then you might think about it, that it is an interesting uh, defense to try from the Black's perspective. Okay, I mean, uh, here we go, let me uh, just uh, try to get the file and we can get started. So naturally we'll be doing this from the Black's perspective, um, for some reason, yeah, okay, now it's, uh, now it's uh, turning, yeah, high Vishnu, uh, yeah, he added those points, at least a command in the, in the, in the chat section, and uh, I already announced the last stream, now you can uh, try to redeem uh, the so-called channel points, or for me they are activity points, I have also set up a new goal. Well, we'll see how it will go. As you can see, it's it it's, it has this uh, red um, progress bar in below the screen, and uh, also the third command which I have input in the uh, stream title is exclamation mark club. I've opened a brand new club in the chess.com system, and I would be very happy that you could join it, so that I could organize various activities there. But okay, I mean, let's start with the Sicilian Tamanov. So what is Sicilian Tamanov? Obviously, I think you know. So e4, c5, knight of 3, and e6. What I find it actually interesting is that... Um, let me perhaps... Uh, yeah, just... Uh, uh, switch off this self-analysis because then for some reason the what is collab? I don't have such a command, Vishnu. <laughs> yeah. So what's what is interesting about um, Cecilia and uh, Tamanov? You can start it in a number of ways. So after, oh, why is it? Why is it self-analysis doing? Ah, wait a second. What is this? What is this? Wait a second, computer is slightly lagging, I mean. Yeah, I don't know. So anyway, I mean, you can you can uh, reach the Sicilian Tamanov uh, with a number of ways. For example, one is playing the second movie, E6, D4. Why is it lagging? C takes Knight E4, Knight C6, which is typically the way I play it out. Yeah, that's, that's weird, actually. It never has lagged before, this analysis board. Strange. That's strange. Yeah, let me... I just I just started it, Arpicot. It just started a couple of minutes ago. But I'm surprised that uh, chess.com analysis board is lagging. I mean, I don't get it. Why is... What is like that? Okay, maybe... maybe okay, like this. For some reason, when I click on analysis... It is lagging. Anyway, uh, so this is typically the way I play it out after d4, c takes knight, d4, knight, c6. But there is obviously for every single move there is a drawback. For example, after e6, why can try to force upon you to play c3 some kind of a improved alapin? Because you already committed yourself by playing e7, a6. So something like either you play knight f6, either you play d5, these moves are completely playable. And uh, here it's quite difficult to get a sharp game. No, I did not refresh. I think I just clicked on a different tab on the openings. Uh, yeah, for some reason it was lagging uh, when I was uh, doing this from the analysis uh, uh, tab. Yeah, so but what you can do here, you can actually start with knight c6. And then you avoid these, which I call myself, botic variation after e6 g3. 
uh, c3, then it's sort of like a clean lapping, and you have not yet played e6, but you would have to learn something from bishop b5, which is the Russell Emo. So I've actually played it a number of ways myself. I've started with e6, second move, or knight c6, the second move, depending on the opponent. So I just try to uh, avoid some lines, if I have the knowledge what my opponent is going to play. I don't mind playing um, Russell Lima with black, because I know it with white, right? I, I wrote a database for white. Yeah, high school as Grupacion, high Voros. Yeah, we just started. Yeah, anyway, so let's let's presume that we are going to start with e6, d4, c takes, knight d4, and knight c6. I would treat... Uh, what is this? Why is it... That's strange. It seems that chess.com has made some update to the analysis uh, board. Let me let me adjust the board. That's strange, actually. Yeah, it shouldn't shouldn't be like that. Uh, Vishnu, I don't think I have. Oh, thank you for uh, Adriana for the host. No shout out command. Yeah, I realized a complete noob. Yeah, complete noob. I should probably install the um, Nightbot. I'm right now using the Moobot as my helper for the chat. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, uh, uh, I have no active command for shout out. I know, I know, I should have. I should have had it. Okay, okay. Sorry about that. It seems there was uh, some kind of. Um, update for the analysis board because I don't recognize it. There's some changes. Yeah, okay. So after uh, knight c6, I think this line is uh, sort of older brother of the other Sicilian uh, of the pulse and calm system after a6, which I actually used to play some time ago. So after a6, typically black plays something like queen c7, uh, knight f6, d6, sometimes the position switches to uh, Sicilian Scheveningen. But one of the reasons why actually uh, four knights Sicilian, yeah, I'm not a big fan of it, uh, I'll tell you honestly. Uh, but uh, one of the reasons why I switched from the Sicilian Khan is this line, c4, uh, that the white immediately forces upon a black to play, and then... Uh, what was it? Uh, Barozzi bind. And after knight f6, knight c3, bishop b4. I think that was a rather risky choice. No, I mean, it was one of the main moves, but I think after queen c7, bishop e2, bishop b4, white is not even bothering himself to play 3, and he's playing short castle. And all of these hostilities are typically in white's favor. What what was it? Something like takes, takes, knight e4, bishop f3, the bishop a3. Mm. I mean, this is looking super dangerous. And if you don't take on c3, why did you play bishop b4 in the first place? And there was this famous game after bishop b4. What was it? Queen d3. You might remember Magnus Carlsen against Vishwanathan Anand. Uh, World Championship match. I didn't think it was the first match. 2013. Maybe 14. I'm mixing them up because they played two matches pretty much in a row. Uh, yeah, so this is... Um, uh, how do I shout out? How do I shout out? I, I have no idea how to do that, Vishnu. Can you help me there? Yeah, and, uh, and in the particular game, it, the game proceeded like this. Takes, takes, queen d8, king d8, e5. It was quite a famous game. Yeah, Magnus won. But he blundered, and Anan did not notice it. But anyway, I mean, this line is dead. I believe it's dead. Um, nobody is playing it. It was pretty much the last time somebody tried it at a competitive level. And that's one of the reasons. So sub, something like after, let's say, knight c3, queen c7, bishop e2, b6. What was the continuation here? I think it was castle here, queen d3, d6, f4, knight d7. And what was b4? Yeah, this is a super, super dangerous line for black. I tried it myself, black with black, twice. And uh, both of the times I realized I'm suffering. So that was back in 2016, 15, 16. No, it was the end of the year, 2015. I got it to play it twice. Yeah, this is the, this is the con. I'm just telling the backstory. So this is why I decided to switch. I mean, I could obviously improve. 
uh, the line, so I decided to switch to Sicilian Tamanov. And after Sicilian Tamanov, typically, once white is taking on c6, we are happy to take with the b pawn. I think that's the rule. That's the rule. You should always try to take with the b pawn. Otherwise, if you take with the d pawn, you are just fighting for equality in a slightly worse position. We'll have several uh, examples. And uh, by standard, you want to play something like queen c7, a6, knight f6, and don't rush with d6. So that you have this option to bring the bishop to b4. After knight c6, uh, let's say why to try to play this out in a number of ways. Um, let's start some, uh, perhaps with uh, the simplest approach. Something like knight b5, which is pretty much the only way how white can force the Morazzi bind. I mean, okay, there is technically also the move c4, which we're going to check the next. But um, after knight b5, um, you just shouted manually. Okay, Vishnu, thank you. Thank you, yeah. I mean, I I still need to learn these commands. Yeah, thank you guys. I mean, who came who came over from Adriana's channel and uh, for the host, of course, I'm very happy. So I'm doing this uh, bootcamp, which is a traditional stream once per week. Uh, last week I didn't have it because I'm sort of in a vacation mode. My vacation ends this week. <laughs> yeah, so next week I'm gonna start this as usual. And uh, here after knight b5, this is the only way how white can try to force uh, Morozzi bind. After d6, c4, but I believe we are happy. We are happy to get, to get here because essentially white spent two tempi to force for black to play the Morozzi bind. So, for example, I had one really great game after knight of six here, a6. Okay, knight d4, white could go back, doesn't really matter. And uh, I played against a youngster which was uh, last year's Grenka Open, I found this really great idea from some of the um, standard hedgehog positions after rook c8. Typically, the knight goes to c5. Yeah, that's the standard idea. But that, I thought about this one. So after knight e5, b3, and g5. So I knew this idea from the classical hedgehog. And the idea is that I just play king h8, <laughs> rook g8, uh, yeah, I don't know about knight c5, but queen f8 and f5, g4, and suddenly for white it's not so easy to react. Because this system, uh, this system against a hedgehog, it's a classic. Yeah, I mean, typically uh, Murazi bind, bishop on e2, uh, the second bishop goes to e3, f3, short castle, and then presumably white tries to do some damage at the queen side. Yeah, but uh, here in this particular game, when I, when I thought about this uh, on the board, I thought it is quite difficult. I mean, technically here, white could also play f4. This would give us some targets uh, to uh, pressure the pawn on e4. Something like knight e7, knight c5, bishop f6. We are threatening to take and take this pawn on e4. So f3, it made sense, right? Uh, and yeah, and suddenly g5, securing this knight's outpost on e5, and king h8 and rook g8. And for white, it's quite difficult to get rid of this knight on e5. So I thought that was quite quite interesting. I tried to force um, some complications. The game proceeded something like this. Yeah, so I crushed my opponent quite quickly after f5. a5 doesn't really matter. Nothing is going on at the queen side and g4. Yeah, so everything is opening up at the king side and yeah, rook g4, queen f5, knight f3. There's a four king coming. So my opponent collapsed very quickly. Yeah, so. So he was a young player, uh, something like 14, 15 years old, 2,250. Um, maybe, I mean, I'll just tell you honestly, I was improvising on the board. That was a clear improvisation. So computer perhaps won't slightly really like it. But the idea is in this uh, hedgehog systems to force this game at king side. And since white has wasted two tempi, to force upon black the Morozzi bind, I think it's rather effective. Doesn't mean it's always gonna work. But uh, let me tell you honestly, I think about this line, the whole line about knight b5, I've always believed it's not a dangerous line. I mean, you should be happy. I, I know, I mean, I'm a big fan of the Morozzi bind myself. I played it numerous occasions in many lines, so I always recommend for everyone 
who can get his hands on the Morozzi Binds structure, go for it. But here, White is playing a, paying a price. He's a, essentially wasting a couple of tempos to force for Black to do this. I think there was also this possibility to play Bishop F4. Uh, but after e5, bishop e3, this feels like some weird uh, Chelyabinsk. I mean, this is this is Sicilian Chelyabinsk line. Sicilian Sveshnikov, perhaps. It's more more popular uh, title. Yeah, thank you, Vishnu, uh, for the host. Uh, I mean, it is playable bishop c4 or uh, knight e5 right away, but typically black enjoys here a good game, and it's not something you should be overly concerned about. So knight b5 is not really that dangerous. So there's also an attempt after the Sicilian Taimanov to play c4. I mean, we are trying to set up Morozzi bind right away. So after c4, knight of 6. Uh, you cannot obviously with white play e5, which would be a great move if not for queen a5 and queen e5. And this motive is going to be there for quite some time. So after knight of 6... Knight c3, bishop b4, takes. Again, we are always taking with the b pawn. I mean, if you if you want, you can suffer, of course. You can you can take with the d pawn. Yeah, something like in the which is something similar to the Carlson against an arm game. Takes, takes, e5, knight e4, and a3, which is a classic idea. So you could win this pawn, but I think your knight is gonna feel rather um uh, misplaced and this knight has to find I don't know a way to go back to the camp yeah so this is a dangerous approach to take with the b-pawn so I always recommend to take with the b-pawn and uh, white has to play bishop b3 e5 doesn't work knight e4 queen g4 which is a classical idea um a classical no it's not knight of Vishnu uh, may maybe some of the ideas are similar here, after knight c3, I think so, I'll try to remember it correctly. Queen g... what was it? No, I think it was a3. No, a3 was bishop. Now I'm mixing it, it up. Takes... I hope I'm not mixing it up badly. What I just remember is that this line is not working. Because this approach of uh, playing e5, knight e4, and queen g4 is a classic. For example, in this line, uh, what was it? Here, here, knight f6, bishop b4, e5, knight e4, and queen g4. I think so, yeah. And after, what was it again? After knight c3, a3. Again, I'm hope I'm not mixing it up because I was I was playing this line uh, some time ago. It was, it is quite a fishy line. This knight of six, knight of six, uh, knight c three, and bishop b four. But e five, knight e five is the main move. Knight e four is uh, like a, um, um, how to say a bluff. Yeah. So queen g four has to be played, and after knight c three, I believe it was a three. Bishop a five, and this loses. I think on the spot, something like this. Or was it bishop g5, then bishop h? This loses. So anyway, why I'm showing this, the idea is quite similar. So we are playing knight c6. White is supposedly wasting the tempo for c4. And here we actually, we can play bishop b4. Because the c4 is a waste of time. And now queen g4 doesn't work. It supposedly doesn't work. I just don't remember why exactly. Uh, something like, again, a3, and pretty sure it was queen a5. Yeah. And... And the black is doing just, just excellent. So typically here white is taking on c6 and plays bishop d3. So we could shortly cover this position. And uh, what you need to know is you don't have to push d5. I mean, it is a wrong impression for many that you have to make a break from the center for all costs. Because this essentially will free up white's bishops. And since you're going to make a short castle, your king in the king side is going to feel slightly unsafe so i think the easiest uh, probably approach is to try to fix this bishop and try to make it look bad so i suggest to play e5 e5 yeah so you're fixing this bishop castle castle and the typical mistake which i've seen already number of games in my own games people like to play bishop g5 
but this is a mistake. H6 here, and again, I don't remember exactly the order of the moves, pretty sure it was something like bishop c5, why does, I don't know, whatever. King h1, g5, here, d6, and your plan is very simple. King g7, knight h5, knight f4, h5, h4, bishop e6, rook b8, and white is suffering because of this weakness. So he's trying to do something here, but this bishop is super powerful on c5. So bishop on g5 is a mis uh, misplayed move. So why typically plays something like, uh, what was it? Something like bishop e3? Um, yeah, I mean, I did not check the theory, of course, here. I'm just, again, showing this from memory. You're threatening some knight g4 ideas. And it's something like this. Something like this. I should be happy about this position. I mean, there might be some occasions when you actually you can take on, you can take on c3, just play c5, fix this as a weakness, bishop e6, perhaps queen e7, and just just play it out carefully. White has the two bishops, but you have some targets to to attack. Uh, I know a couple of GMs who are playing this um, in, in 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 some games. But I don't treat it as quite a dangerous line. Again, if white takes, knight takes on c6, we are taking the b-pawn, and nobody is taking b takes on c6 for one reason which I'm going to explain to you right now. And after bishop d3, I think also it's quite important probably not to rush with the d5. I think you can play d5 when you want. So I would probably start with something like knight f6, castle, and... Yeah, probably you can play b5. Or maybe you can try to switch to the same idea of e5, but then again, white doesn't have to play c4 and give up this, this square on d4. So pretty much you are uh, free to improvise however you want to play. But, I mean, you can play b5, d5, knight d7, and uh, just try somehow perhaps exchange this bishop here or position it on b7, play c5, bishop e7, g6, and it's a healthy position. Uh, what is important to know about this position? Black is playing, there's this line, after knight c3, there's a very tricky continuation a6. Now black is already, <laughs> yeah, thank you for the hydrate. Yeah, it was two hydrates, right? <laughs> yeah, I need to hydrate, obviously. Okay, and after a6, white can take on c6, which is the main move. And we are playing exactly the same. B takes, bishop d3, and d5. And now you can make a comparison. You have wasted time on a6, and still you are quite happy to play this position. Because again, after something like short castle, if knight of 6, what was the main move uh, here? I don't remember. Something like rook e1, bishop e7, e5, knight e7, queen g4, king f8, then g6, h, I'm sorry, h5 bishop b7 c5 and it's not easy it's not easy to get to get through black's defenses and black can actually take over my favorite opening uh, i don't know i i have, I, uh, have no such favorite opening i, I like cecilia and tamanov but i wouldn't exactly say it's my favorite opening really i just like it i mean i like dutch defense also i like Cecilia and Rosalima. Maybe Cecilia and Rosalima is my favorite. I don't know. I haven't really thought about it too much. So it makes no sense for white to take on c6 because we are going to play a6 right later. So this is quite important to understand. And essentially, of course, if white is going to take on c6, you are not going to play a6 anymore. So here white plays a number of ways. Um, he has many, many uh, setups here. He can try to go bishop e3, which is the most aggressive. He can go bishop e2. He can go g3, bishop g2. He can go f4. Uh, he can go knight b5. He can go, I mean, just name it. There's so many continuations here. But uh, we, we can probably start with some of the not so dangerous. Uh, let's start with, for example, I don't know, maybe, maybe g3. Oh, for some reason. Oh, okay, knight c3. I'm, I'm to move, obviously. Uh, knight c3, queen c7. Uh, yeah, again, we are at all times, we are ready to take with the b-pawn. 
Knight b5 here doesn't give anything. It's a waste of time. So something like knight b5, queen b8. You just want to play a6 next move. So any bishop f4 ideas, they're not going to work. Um, there is this trick, bishop e3. But you can just safely play a6 here. Takes, takes. But it doesn't really work. Check. Here. Bishop a5. Check. And just give up the queen. Which is already a great position. You have three light pieces for the queen. Uh, white has a pawn, but it doesn't really play such a big role. So black has excellent chance, chances to take over in this game. But again, I mean, probably you don't have to do this. I mean, if you feel unsecure, you can do something else. I mean, you don't have to play a6. You can play whatever. I mean, you can play knight of 6. Start with knight of 6. Right? I just wanted to show you this idea that it's not particularly dangerous. Another hydrate. Yeah. A lot of hydration needed, right? Yeah, so let's say White is doing something else, uh, whatever, I don't know. Maybe he changes his mind here, here. Uh, you don't have to retreat with the queen back to c7. And just play something like knight f6, bishop b4 right away, and the queen actually stands here quite well for the time being. Anyway, okay, so after queen c7, let's say White is playing g3. Uh, what I... Uh, what I've uh, came, uh, what I've came to realize here, it's probably quite important uh, to fix the queen side first, because the classical idea here for white, let's say we are playing something like uh, a6, the classical Taimanov, knight f6, castle, uh, what was it? Uh, bishop e7, rook e1, d6. Yeah, this is the classical line. White can play here, some theoretical line. e5, d takes, rook e5. And presumably white is better. I mean, obviously, I don't have super huge analysis there, but uh, uh, I try to avoid this. So this is why, as soon as my opponent is playing g3, I propose to fix the queen side first. So, okay, a6 is fine, or maybe d6 right away. Yeah, so let's say a6 here. Oh, wait a second, where was this? g3 was a disorder already i had written it down but ah i had written it down but for some reason it didn't copy paste okay so we are playing a6 d6 i firstly position the bishop on d7 so let's say white is trying to do something like this short castle we position the bishop on d7 and after rook e1 bishop e7 and after queen g4, there is this very nice motive to play h5. Queen g7 is impossible because of the bishop f6. So that's the little trick. We are positioning bishop e7, knight on f6, short castle, rook c8. And we are sort of forced to play some sort of a shevening in line. But it's not dangerous. I mean, I've always believed that any systems with g3, bishop g2, they're not dangerous for black. I mean, it's just to get a game. It means your opponent wants to just develop the pieces and it gives you quite a lot of freedom to play. So it's not something you should be overly concerned about. And yeah, something like, I don't know, let's, let's put some standard moves, whatever, bishop e3, knight of 6, h3, castle, a4 at some point. You can try to do something like, uh, what was it here? For example, knight e5, knight c4, rook c8, I'm sorry. Rook c8, rook d8, bishop e8. White typically tries to do something like g4, g5. So this is probably a good moment to reserve the spot on d7. I mean, this is obviously a long, long game. So you can play this. Um, yeah, so g3 is not really something you should be concerned about. Let's say if white is trying to play something like g4, like to save a tempo. Probably this means you can already think about not positioning the knight on f6, but think about the other squares. So I would think about it. Something like takes, takes, perhaps a6 here, and position this knight not on f6 to jump on the g5, but something like knight e7, maybe knight g6. Take care of this square. I mean, it looks completely logical because white is uh, yeah, making very rash decision to push forward these pawns. 
So it would make sense for white to push g4 once the knight is on f6, not before. So why could try to play f4? So f4 typically means that a white is uh, ready to meet knight f6 with e5. And again, I think there should be one rule. Uh, you should try to avoid, at least what I'm what I'm doing myself. Try to avoid to play any Schwenningen systems after d6. This is automatically slightly worse. It doesn't matter the, the setup. Something like bishop e3, queen f3, long castle, g4, g5. This is automatically worse. So one of the um, advantages of the Sicilian Tamanov is that you keep this option to jump at the bishop on b4 and try to pressure the center as quickly as possible. So if you're playing d6 very quickly, you take away this option. So it, it's already not Sicilian Tamanov, it's uh, yeah, Sicilian Scheveningen, and you give quite a lot of freedom. And when you're playing against a skilled player, he'll need to play f4, g4, g5, uh, taking quite a lot of uh, space advantage. I mean, it's it's playable, of course, but, but you're worse. Just be ready for this. So after knight c3, queen c7, f4, uh, let me put it, yeah, after f4, uh, we are not going to do that. I propose just to take on d4. Just to take on d4, queen d4, and play a6. So the idea is, it, it seems quite odd, right? Because white is so much ahead in development, so it would seem he has some space advantage. But what's really great about this line? It's so easy for you to play out the following position. You want to play b5. Bishop b7, rook c8, and you are not rushing with the kingside development. You are doing queenside first, uh, then knight f6, and bishop c5. So let's say, I mean, why could try to do is something like this. Typically, people play like this, something like bishop e3. Makes sense, right? b5, long castle, bishop b7. We are not developing the knight on f6, and certainly not on e7. Because it would jump under bishop b5, a takes, knight b5, knight d6 idea. So you need to watch out for this. Uh, here, again, for white, it might be quite difficult to pick up a move here. Because we are threatening at some, some moment to play b4, rook c8, and some problems here arise on c2. So let's say white is playing a3. It makes sense. It's a completely normal move. So you can play rook c8. And threaten knight of 6, knight e4, and still threatening something to do here. So, uh, I don't know actually what is the... Maybe actually some bishop a3 at the right time is possible. So, I, I don't know really about that, but I just noticed it. For, so, for example, I just wanted to, to give you this idea. Maybe instead of the long castle, I'll try something, let's say, a3 here, bishop e2. Um... Rook c8, short castle, and knight f6. And we want to play bishop c5 next move. So let's say white is doing something random. He is doing something, I don't know, rook d1. You're happy about this position. Bishop c5. And this is quite a great position for you to have. Let's say, because you're essentially targeting this uh, pawn on e4, if he's pushing e5, Obviously not knight e5 because of knight e4 and knight e6, but now you play knight e4. Takes, takes, and typically the king comes here, and you can target the center of something like f6 or rook d8, d6. The bishop can go, come back to c6, a5, b4, and white has nothing. So this is quite an interesting position where you can try to take over the, the initiative. And if white is not pushing this pawn forward, the classical idea is after bishop f3, let's say, you're always pushing e5. That's the idea. You're fixing this as a bad bishop. And again, you want to play something like king e7, rook d8 or c8, I don't know, maybe bishop c6, a5, b4, and try to get to this pawn. And also this one. So something like this. King e7, and that's, that's really a great outpost on e5. I mean... Of course, I won't guarantee it's working exactly right now here in this spot. I'm just telling you the ideas which are uh, quite common for this line. So this is this is the big, big idea behind this line. So if white is pushing a four, you are, I suggest to take. 
play a6 with this idea, bishop b7, rook c8, knight f6, and bishop c5. And it's not easy, it's not easy for white to prove what he has here. I mean, something like if white is pushing e5, you can find other squares for the knight, maybe through e7 to f5. It looks completely normal. Um, from what I've seen in practical games, white is struggling to get advantage here. So f4, I wouldn't really be concerned about. So, yeah, I don't think this is something you should be concerned to be concerned as well. So let's go to the main line. One of the main lines, the old line, which is bishop e2. I think we covered already knight c6, knight b5, f4. I mean, there are other quiet moves. There's, for example, move like queen d3. I, I was first surprised with this move, uh, which was a couple of years ago. I was playing in Bundesliga against uh, Pavel Elyanov. And he surprised me, actually, by playing e4. Yeah, I'm not to attack exactly, Vishnu. He surprised me by playing queen d3. It's a rather strange move. Uh, what I played in the game, I played the same idea. a6, b5, bishop b7, rook c8. Actually, I won the game. It was quite surprising for me. Uh, not a great game for my opponent. And uh, I think the computer suggestion was something like bishop g5 here. Yeah, I just tried to slow down the development. But I think I'm still fine here after b5, bishop b7, rook c8. And maybe think about what to do with this knight. Yeah, knight of six, maybe not, but maybe some improvised f6, bishop c5, b4, something. I mean, it's not obvious what to do for white. But what is actually possible to do here? There is this move, knight of six. And the whole idea of this queen d3 is it's rather weird. Something like knight b5, queen b8, and queen g3. And these queen g3 ideas, they have, uh, they have become quite popular recently. So we are probably not going to take on g3, because we are going to need to deal with this fork on c7. So we just play d6. Uh, d6, and what was it here? Bishop e... I think so. Bishop e3, a6. And bishop b6, again, doesn't work for some reasons. Takes, takes, and what was it? I mean, I don't remember. Was it rook a4? Yeah, so these checks or bishop c7s, they don't really are threatening with anything. There's some... Or maybe actually it was even possible to play knight e4 right away. I mean, I just don't remember, but this was not possible. So after bishop e3, a6, knight e4. Again, we are not rushing with the queen to go back to c7. I mean, why should we? We just play something like bishop d7 and b5, b4. And seek our game, and that's a really great position, queen on b8. And uh, by standard, we we can play at some time bishop e7 and sacrifice this pawn on g7. So, for example, white is playing here. I don't know. I would I would think about this. Uh, let's say. I I would need to check the theory, of course, here. So let's say I would think about b5. Um, f3. And let's say something like, I mean, maybe even b4 is possible. Why not? Where are you going to position this knight? Not on a4, right? So knight e2, knight e5, and at the right time to play bishop e7, to sacrifice this pawn on uh, g7, queen h6, and then do something at the queen side. So that's, that's at least the idea. So this queen d3 is meant like a surprise. I don't think it's really that dangerous. So let's go to the main line, the old main line, bishop e2. Uh, the, fortunately, the bishop e2, I think, that is the biggest drawback of this alternative, a6 line. Because white doesn't have to take on c6, he can go bishop e2 as well, here. And after knight f6, short castle, you still have to play queen c7. So this is why, actually, I've discarded this... Uh, this alternative to play a6, whatever title it bears, I don't know. Some kind of a neo Tamanov. Yeah, so here I believe you still have to go for the main line. a6. Uh, why we are playing a6? Yeah, that's that's rather important. Because at the right time, white might be threatening to play knight b5 and take care of this square. So for example, I believe we can still play knight of 6. Castle. But bishop b4 which would be a great move 
white always will have knight b5 wherever it will go and a3 and that's the problem um take on b5 with the bishop uh it depends i mean like i said vishnu in in uh, in most of the occasions it doesn't really work but you should be aware of this idea it doesn't work it's supposed to be a bluff but maybe white isn't really losing but uh it doesn't doesn't work the sacrifice on b5 yeah and here it, it doesn't work so if you're retreating you lost the tempo bishop takes on c3 gives no makes no sense so this is the reason why we are playing a6 we are stopping this knight b5 idea and again if white is at any given moment taking on c6 just take with the b pawn and think about some ideas either to push e5 or d5 e5 knight d7 um let's say after a6 okay okay of course white cannot play f4 because this drops a queen right away i mean it's a standard mistake so white is playing bishop e3 uh if somebody plays against you this rather quickly you should be quite aware that your opponent knows the main line here because this is the main line and uh, you have to do something here so i think bishop b4 is still looking quite good uh white doesn't have knight b5 anymore uh so the main move is knight a4 um what else i mean there are some other alternatives uh there is king h1 there is a3 a quiet move to stop bishop b4 from happening if i'm not mistaken after a3 i was reading a long time ago alexander delchev's book the most flexible sicilian that was my little theoretical luggage before i started to play this line of course there are some mistakes in the book because you need to of course uh verify everything but the idea after a3 if i remember correctly was now you can play b5 and bishop b7 and since white has played a3 here he won't have time to push a4 which would be a classical idea if at some moment you're playing b5 the classical approach is to play a4 immediately try to break your queenside pawn structure and then after b4 whatever happens i mean depending on the actual situation yeah, so this is why we are playing here a6 and knight f6 and let's say after a3 it really makes sense to play b5 okay but here of course after knight takes on c6 you have to take with the pawn yeah because queen takes on c6 e5 i'm sorry e5 bishop f3 oh there's a big trouble in coming so you just take here and probably push e5 bishop e7 bishop e6 with a normal position uh, obviously there is a longer theory than this i just don't have the time to show everything to you um from the beginning i i am not so sure i can do this no no we're not halfway mark i just uh, start with the, some of the basic lines but but uh, uh some of the perhaps not not so important lines so this is when the real stuff starts so king h1 is the idea to push f4 e5 right away and here i believe the theory was takes takes bishop c5 wherever the queen goes should it be d3 d2 d1 there's so many moves here let's assume simple queen d1 and what was it b5 here 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 and now i'm i don't remember to be honest i think it was h5 h5 had some ideas to play knight g4 e5 and knight g4 I think so i think so i mean unless i'm mistaken so you're happy to sacrifice this pawn on g4 because you get two strong killer bishops but seemingly this line is okay yeah, but again i mean doesn't mean this uh, line is unplayable of course it is playable uh so the main line goes bishop e3 and everybody knows this i mean everybody who is playing with white everybody who is playing the amount of black everybody knows this line this is a classic after bishop b4 so white has to know this move knight a4 it's not really that difficult for somebody who has opened the book at least once in a lifetime everything else and um, black has an excellent position well perhaps with the exception of knight takes on c6 there is slightly tricky lines so let's say white is playing something like i don't know f3 common mistake yeah f3 you just play d5 
takes takes an excellent position. Short castle, bishop d6. A rook e8. I mean, uh, nothing to worry about here. So anything else, I mean, something like bishop f3, bishop d3 looks so passive and strange. I mean, it probably it is possible to play something like bishop f3. But this gives you quite a lot of room for improvisation. So for example, I don't know, I mean, maybe something like h5. I mean, why not? h5, knight g4 idea, threaten to something, go here. You want to play knight e5, maybe b5, bishop b7. You're thinking about which moment to take on c3. Maybe not right away. So you are uh, causing your opponent some headaches regarding the spawn on um, uh, on, uh, on on e4. Hi, not a not a great fan. That's that's a great nickname. <laughs> yeah, it, I haven't been really that active recently. I've been streaming a couple of weeks, twice per week. So perhaps this is the reason why you didn't notice me. Um, yeah. So after bishop b4, knight a4. The idea is what. A white is threatened to play knight b6. So you cannot take on e4. That's a mistake. You should know this. Again, I, I don't remember exactly what was the problem with that. I think it was something like knight e4, knight c6, b takes, and queen d4. I think so. something like this. Here, here, here. There's so many threats. So you're losing something on the spot. So after knight c6, queen c6, I think it was still, I don't remember, maybe queen d4, bishop f3, knight b6. You should just know, this is a mistake. Um, f4 in Tamanov. Uh, you mean, which move is it? Ah, you mean here, you mean here, not here f4, right? You mean after knight takes on c6. Andre, this is what we mean, right? Knight x on c6 and f4. I think so. There is this line. Takes, takes, and f4. Yeah, it is interesting. Ah, the main lines with queen d2. Yeah, this is something which I did not yet go, uh, got to, uh, to cover. Yeah, I mean, of course, queen d2 is, is, is entirely possible. Yeah. I'm not so sure. I mean... <laughs> Uh, please don't expect it's going to be like encyclopedia, right? Because I have quite limited time to cover this. And uh, so it's going to be sort of like an introduction. Maybe you'll get some new ideas uh, to have a look at. But uh, mostly it's like a suggestion for new players. I mean, who, who have never played it out, who are struggling in some openings. So uh, Cecilia and Tamanov, I think it brings uh, quite an interesting dynamic um, game. And uh, I think it's, for some reason, uh, neglected than uh, uh, Sicilian um, Nidorf. For some reason, Nidorf is more popular. I mean, I've never understood why. I think Sicilian Tamanov is also just working just fine. Yeah, here, actually, this F4 is quite, quite a tricky line. Um, yeah, so after bishop b4, knight a4, we cannot take, just take my word for it, uh, there was a computer refutation for that. Everybody knows this. So you are making a castle here. Now the only difference is if white ever plays c4 here. Now you have to take this pawn. You have to because if you play something else, doesn't matter what you're playing. You're playing, I don't know, maybe. I, I, I'm struggling actually to find a move here. So for example, rook e8, whatever. So white is playing a3, bishop e7, for example, and knight c3. And you are forced to play uh, moral c bind again. And your position is feeling already sort of cramped. So if white is playing here, c4, with also intentions to play c5, you just have to accept the pawn sacrifice. You take on e4. Uh, what was the line here? I think it was c5. And again, it's quite dangerous to take here. I think it was... What was here after knight c5? Wasn't it losing right away? I think it was losing right away after knight c6. Again, maybe I'm mistaken. Knight c6, queen c6, takes, takes, rook c1 and b4. Something like this. Yeah, Pretty sure it was losing. And this knight c5. So after c5, I think the simplest approach here is retreat with the knight. Whatever white is doing here. Oh, wait a second. I'm wrong, actually. How did this happen? Knight e4. Wait, wait, wait. 
I think I'm mixing up something. What did I mix up? Wait, I'm mixing up something totally badly. Let me... Ah, because the bishop was supposed to be on e7. Yeah, I'm, I mixed up myself. Wait. Wait. This is what happens when you are showing everything from memory. And then you mix up things. Okay, here we go again. Try to... I'll try to again start it from scratch. What was it here? Here, 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 here. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bishop e7. Yeah, stupid me. Stupid me. Yeah, bishop e7, of course. Of course, of course. Yeah, so bishop e7. Yeah, this is why I'm, uh, yeah, I mixed it up. So after bishop e7, not, not short castle. Bishop e7, I apologize. My mistake, my mistake. So after bishop e7. Uh, you are now threatening to take. If white is retreating, you have gained a tempo of bishop e7. Uh, so, after knight c6, which is the main move, but if here white actually plays c4, okay, okay, now, uh, now, I, now I remember. After c4, knight e4, c5, we just make a castle. And typically, the idea is something like this. After queen c2, knight of 6, we position the rook here. We are pushing e5 and d5. So let's say, whatever, I don't know. Let's say rook c1, rook e8, knight b6, rook b8, whatever. g3, threatening with bishop f4. Here, here, and here. So this is the idea. And... You have sacrificed a pawn. I mean, white has sacrificed a pawn for two bishops. But you have some counterplay at the king's side. So at some moment, white is winning back the pawn on a6. Take on c6, something like this. And the position is equal. That, that's all I remember. First time... Oh, I'm sorry. Why is it... Why is it happening? That's strange. Now it's uh, showing... Again, like this. Yeah, I mean, for some reason, I apologize about that. For some reason, the board is changing changing the size. Ah, okay, okay, I see. Yeah, so it happened then. Sorry about that. Okay, okay, I see. So, hope hope it should be fine now. So, that's the idea. After knight a4, you retreat with the bishop. Yeah, so I apologize. That I mean, I know this line, of course, but I just uh, mixed it up. And uh, after c4, white is threatening to play knight c3 to force upon you a Morozzi bind, a hedgehog position. So this is why we are taking now this pawn. Knight e4, c5. And again, here knight c5, I think, okay, now I remember. Here knight c5 is actually a mistake. Takes, I think so. Takes, takes, and bishop c5. I can, okay, it doesn't matter. You just don't take on c5. It doesn't matter. I mean, maybe there was immediate loss after knight c6. It doesn't really matter. It's just just bad. Yeah, maybe it was maybe it was immediately losing, something like this. Yeah, knight c6, queen c6, and uh, takes, takes, and rook c1. We are not, of course, interested to find out in how many ways black can lose this. So after knight e4, c5, short castle. White is playing whatever. Rook c1. The safest choice is always retreat. White is at some moment playing knight b6. Rook b8. I don't know what is here. Something like the main the main theory here. Something like g3. Let's say we are threatened to play bishop f4. And again the idea is the same. I think so at least. Okay, g3 though I, I don't think here I can play d5, right? Because white just takes on d6. But, I mean, you just have to remember this idea. So, let's say I could try to do this like this. G6, which is also an idea. Let's say white is doing something. I don't know. Queen here. And now we are playing E5. E5. Knight wherever it goes. And D5. 
And at some moment you are happy to sacrifice this pawn on d5 if, if there is such a possibility and uh, you get a good game. Again, I mean, supposedly this line is like a test. Uh, your opponent is testing you. Do you know this uh, continuation? Uh, do you know that you cannot, uh, that you have to take this pawn on e4? But I think the continuation, this short castle, knight of six, and either g6, e5, d5, either rook e8, e5, d5, it's so easy that I never bothered really to spend so much time to study it more in detail. Um, yeah, so after knight a4, bishop e7, knight a6, b takes, which is the classical line. Knight b6 here. Uh, what was it? Knight c8, queen c8. I mean, there are, of course, trickier lines here. There, there are tricky lines after, what was it? Uh, knight a4, knight c6 takes, takes here, takes, takes here. Yeah, I mean, there are a number of ways how you can play this out, but this is the main line. As there are some trickier lines than this. So after c5, bishop e5, rook b6. White typically has two continuations, either queen d3 or b3. b3, I think it sort of invites you to take on e4. Otherwise, white is getting a favorable position with the bishop on b2. So I think knight e4, here, here. What was the move here? Something like here. And um, uh, typically I think... Uh, it depends, of course, on the time control which you are playing. But I think you should be happy about the rising position and play something like bishop f6, knight f6, king e7, queen c7, rook d6, and h5, h4, perhaps. And just, you are very active and have quite a good control of the black squares. But, of course, I mean, in the classical game, when you're playing against a stronger player, it might be not so easy. So, for example, there's some classical ideas after rook g8, bishop, not bishop e5, let's say, but uh, bishop b2. You can still play bishop f6 if you want. But there's also these ideas as rook d6. Some knight e2 ideas if after queen e1 is going to happen. And after bishop d3, at the right time to play c4. Gaining the c5 square. B takes, now I don't remember to be honest. Was it queen c6 here threatening with something on g2? Or, or you can just play bishop f6. And again, reach some kind of a disposition. King e7, queen c5, h5, and a5. Okay, maybe not a5, not to give up this b5 square, but typically the knight dominates the bishop. So that's, that's at least the idea. Of course, I mean, the theory is much longer than this. So I, I read, I believe, Delchev's book. Yeah, and uh, he was giving some samples here and covering this. The recent book, which I've heard, which was published regarding Sicilian time out of which you consider uh, to purchase yourself, it is by Antonio Pavlidis. He is my teammate in Germany. Um, it depends. It depends, really. Depends. I mean, I, can, I, I wouldn't say like this. Uh, not a great fan. That... Uh, uh, you cannot really go to the opening or you should go to the opening. It depends on the position. But you are trying to play against this bad bishop and try to cause some damage to the G file. So my teammate in Bundesliga, Antonius Pavlidis, he, I think it was last year. Yeah, he wrote a book regarding Sicilia and Tamanov. I think it was, the publisher was uh, uh, this uh, Jakob Agard's uh, publishing whatever it was quality chess yeah quality chess i think so he published with them and <laughs> i talked with him about this book and he said to me that he was so stressed about this book he was writing it for so long and um the the publishers they were demanding him really to deliver a great quality so if you're thinking about this i think it's a probably a great book although <laughs> i have not read it i just know it's the most recent book regarding the sicilian time off, unless somebody has uh published a book this year okay and let's say if white playing if white is playing here queen d3 not to give up this option for black to take on e4 by standard you're playing d6 here what was it i think it was castle and the major difference here why this there's a difference between queen d3 and b3 and bishop b2 
that if some occasions, if white is pushing e5, you have access to knight b5, targeting this bishop. So this is why, this is why after b3, I think you have to take on e4. I think so. Otherwise, let's say castle, um, what is it? I don't remember. Let's say queen d3 now, d6, white has bishop b2. So he is still threatening to play e5, bishop f3, making really a good control of his bishops of so many squares. So this is what I think if white is giving you this possibility to take on e4, you should go for it. So after queen d3, d6, here, here. Uh, what was it again? There's, there's so many moves here, but bishop f3 is a possibility, b3 is a possibility. But again, after b3, you might have at the right time this idea to play c4. Queen c4 doesn't work for obvious reasons, because this pawn is in the end going to be under attack. And b takes, again, I mean, this double pawn doesn't really give you anything. Something like knight e7, bishop f6, put the knight on c5, and make this bishop look bad. Uh, yeah, I'm a Latvian guy. <laughs> I hope I answered your question. Yeah, I mean, I can play against the double pawn, but it doesn't really matter. This this double pawn doesn't, doesn't play a great role, does it? So I would suggest for you this use as some sort of a starting package to play against uh, Sicilian and Tamanov. If somebody is going to play with you uh, these lines, at least you would know which direction to look. It's obviously not going to be enough. It's not like this. I mean, you watch the two hours uh, stream regarding Sicilian and Tamanov and everybody comes out an expert. <laughs> at least you'll get some kind of um, uh, impression. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Now you now you catched it. <laughs> now you caught it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so after bishop b7 here, here, this was, I think, more or less. Yeah, there's also, of course, e5 move. e5, knight e5. And uh, after bishop d4, I think that's a force draw already. After c5, c4, takes, takes, queen c5. What was it here? Um, bishop f3 takes here, here, check here, 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 takes, takes, that's a drop. I think that's already a theoretical drop, as far as I remember. So I've been avoiding this myself. <laughs> so I don't have to do this. After knight e5, bishop d4, yeah, you don't have to do this. But what I would like to show you here is quite an important position. Is not after this order of the moves, but let's say white is playing the main move, bishop c1, which is the most challenging move, threatening to play c4. And I wanted to show you, so bishop c5 is a very important move to play knight e7, knight g6, and uh, rearrange the knight. You don't want to position it on b6 or c7. The knight has nothing to do there. So the rising position is this. Uh, let's say bishop b2. Whatever. I mean, maybe my moves are not accurate. But what you are aiming for? You are aiming for this position. You are aiming to exchange ducks for bishops. Let's say white is doing something, whatever. Bishop e5. And this is a dream position for you. Because you are inevitably jumping with the knight on d4 so uh, you can take it over very quickly something like bishop d3 okay bishop d3 whatever i'll just i'll just make some random moves takes takes knight to five whatever and knight d4 then you play a5 and just try to slowly grind it out maybe f5 g5 and make this make the most out of this outpost on the knight on d4. So that, that's at least the general idea of this line. So again, how did it happen? How did it happen? So this was the main line after bishop e3, uh, bishop b4, knight a4 here, 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 knight c8, queen c8, e5. Yeah, after bishop d4, I'll tell you what to do about that. So bishop c1, bishop c5, here, here. Here, 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 whatever. I mean, some random moves again. So that's our idea, to play c5, to play bishop e5, 
exchange the dark square bishops, and either three f5 or c6, put the knight on d4. Super easy. Super easy. Of course, anything can happen before that. I've played this line a number of times, and pretty much always I managed to get the position. So the same position can, 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 you can try to reach it if you don't like the draw. If you, if you don't want to play a draw, you can try to do the same here. Something like, it, but it's going to be a worse position for you, probably. So something like uh, queen c7, here, knight f4, knight g6, and again try to do the same. Uh, short castle, c5, d6, exchange the dark square bishops, and somehow land the knight, I'm sorry, to d4. So that's, that's again the, uh, a possible approach. If you're looking for more, I've done this multiple times, but this bishop d4 idea is drawish. All right, let's go forward. Uh, there's also this tricky move after bishop b4. You should be aware of, if you're playing this uh, with black against a competitive player, there's knight c6, b takes, and very interesting moves, either f4 or queen d4. And let me tell you this. I played this game 2016 or 17, I don't remember, Night of Memorial in Warsaw. And I was playing against Daniel Sadzikowski from Poland, the young GM, who is quite good with theory. And he played against me queen d4. And I remember that Alexander Delchuk in his book, he said, queen d4 is not a dangerous continuation, blah, 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 blah. Black equalizes somehow and gets a good game. So that's, that's what I knew about this line. I did not have very deep analysis. I just trust what, what the author was saying. And then my opponent, after the game, I lost the game quite badly. And my opponent, uh, I don't remember, did he say that he had read the book? But he said what he had chosen was the first choice of Stockfish. I mean, obviously, he had done his homework. So if the author said this is not dangerous, but the Stockfish says something else, there is a continuation which is not covered in the book. You have to check it. So I've always believed, I mean, of course, I'm not saying the author made a mistake. I mean, when you write a book, mistakes or unfinished lines, they're bound to happen, which is completely normal. Probably I also made the same mistakes when I wrote, written the databases. What I wanted to say is that you should always check everything. Don't take it blindly everything uh, an expert is saying. He's saying you're supposed to play this and play this and play this. You have to check everything. Maybe uh, unwillingly uh, the author made a mistake somewhere. Yeah. Or maybe you don't like the rising position. So this is quite, quite important. Yeah, that was quite important. I mean, and here after uh, queen d4, it was c5 here. And I don't remember. I think it was d6. Knight, I'm sorry, castle. So the idea, I, I already, oh, oh, sorry. I think it was, so the whole point here was that I would have to pick up the only move, I, I don't remember, I don't remember the game already. So the only move at some moment was to play a5, imprisoning this bishop voluntarily. Can you imagine this? So that was the only move. If I pick up this a6, a5 move, I'm equalizing everything else, I'm suffering. So, I mean, obviously I didn't know this because it was not in the book, right? So, of course, uh, from that moment I realized that you cannot trust everything blindly in the book and you have to add to the analysis your own Right. Uh, yeah, but again, after queen c4, I wish I would remember. I think it was something like d6. Let me try to remember knight a4. No, this was wrong, wasn't it? Bishop d7. I'll tell you honestly, I don't remember. You can just check my game against Sadzikovsky, against, I'll write in the chat. Uh, so this is, this is, this is my game. Uh, 2016 or 17, I don't remember. So at one moment, I had to play a6, a5. I did not play it, and I got a bad position very, very quickly. And the second move here is f4. But as far as I know, this move is more reserved for some accelerated uh, time controls, because it looks quite scary to take this pawn on e4. 
but as far as I remember, it's quite safe to take it. Takes, takes, knight e4, and now my memory here is uh, really lagging me. So something like, there's bishop d3, there's bishop f3, there's queen d4. Obviously, after queen d4, you play knight f6. After bishop f3, I think it was knight d6, unless I'm mistaken. But the idea to play after bishop c5, knight b7, and then play d6 and short castle. But I might be mistaken. So, of course, if you don't want to do all of this, I played even in one game. I just wanted to avoid theory. I played short castle, e5 and knight e5. So it was uh, slightly suffering, takes, takes, uh, what was it, I don't remember, something like c3, bishop e7, then d6, it's not really that bad, so it is of course uh, playable. So there's always a way, always a way around some big theory if you don't want to, you can improvise on the board. Okay, let's go to some other lines. Um, yeah, bishop e3, a6, and, okay, queen f3 obviously is the main move, queen d2. Knight f6, and Andrei was, uh, was mentioning this line, I think. Yeah, queen d2, knight f6, and f4. This, I don't think I copied this uh, analysis here. Yeah, this is, this is quite a playable line. Again, after f4... There was this line of bishop b4, bishop d3, and knight a5. But I think the, the general outcome of this line is black is always suffering slightly. I mean, black is holding, but black is suffering. So if you want to play this as black, you should know exactly how to equalize. So the main line is quite forced. So a3 takes, 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 d5, what was it, takes, and now I don't remember, I mean, maybe somebody knows what is more actual here, I, I, it's been something like one year or two years when I last checked the theory here, there are two moves here, e takes on d5 or knight takes on d5, black is suffering in most of them, so you are fighting to make a draw here, so that is slightly a problem, this line is quite a problematic line, so after knight d5, Bishop d2, knight b6 with knight c4. There are some games in the database. You can check it very accurately. You are equalizing the game. I just did not copy paste this uh, analysis. But e takes on d5 perhaps is a safer choice. Yeah, and uh, still you are playing a short castle, knight c4. At some time, white is just uh, taking on c4. Probably you are giving up the spawn on c4, but because of this opposite color bishops, most likely you should make a draw. But again, I mean, uh, f5, you mean here? e takes, I mean, yeah, maybe, I, I wouldn't say it's so bad on d7, I'm pretty sure it's doing quite all right. Bishop d7, rook c8, castle, rook e8, knight e4, knight c4. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't say that bishop on c8 is bad. Maybe actually e takes on d5 is a safer choice. But I'll tell you honestly, my knowledge here is quite outdated. But if you are looking for a fight, and you don't want, you don't want to go for this, so pretty much the alternative. What was the alternative here? Wasn't it? I should have checked it. Yeah, I should have checked it. It's not really that a popular line. It's been some time when I checked. I should have checked it. Was it here possible to play b5? I don't remember. So b5, e5 from b4. Yeah, I should have checked it. I, I did not check it, so pretty sure it was something like this. Knight b5 takes, takes. Queen b8 takes, takes. And what was the evaluation of this position? Yeah. But my, my experience here in this line is honestly quite limited. Because queen d2 and f4 is not really that a popular line. Um, yeah, so after f4, if you don't like the rising positions... There's always a way out. You can just play d6 and switch to Chevin again. And presumably the queen on d2 perhaps is not as active as on f3. So there's at least one drawback. So queen f3 would help for white to accelerate g4, g5 more faster. 
and but this position is slightly cramped yeah something like short castle bishop d7 and play typical ideas b5 rook c8 uh, b4 knight a5 knight c4 so on and so forth i mean you can do this and uh, there is not really uh not really uh, probably so huge theory but if you are uh, willing to fight for equality and you can study equalizing lines quite well probably you should go for bishop b4 yeah but again uh, my knowledge really is slightly slightly outdated in this line uh, i think the entire system with queen d2 uh, today is not really that popular much much more popular is queen f3 so queen d2 I, I don't think i've seen so many so many high level games which i cannot say about queen f3 queen f3 has been the most played move recently uh so after knight f6 there's also this continuation to play the english attack after long castle and i think the safest choice is not to play bishop b4 which used to be the main move some time ago but simply play bishop e7 and after f3 b5 g4 takes takes and bishop b7 and again the same ideas are for you available to play rook c8 to play b4 and at the right time perhaps you can play d5 so for example g5 and this is a known trick doesn't really work takes takes here here and queen b8 and uh, black has an excellent compensation for the uh, sacrifice pawn he's gonna play g6 king g7 maybe h6 and the control of the black squares gives black an excellent game i mean obviously there is a longer theory after f3 g5 there is also uh knight takes on c6 move knight c6 now you take with the d pawn g4 and e5 typically positioning the bishop on e6 knight on d7 and something other than bishop or the knight goes to c5 and this position is equal doesn't mean uh, none of the sides can play it i mean of course this line is playable by both sides yeah so the main again g4 knight d4 what was the i think it was bishop d4 was also i mean i mean g4 wasn't perhaps the most accurate move. was it king b1 yeah, king b1 for some reason was more accurate move than g4 but again the rising positions they are quite the same but what i would like to mention here for the sake of simplicity that typically why push a g5 i mean he has to otherwise you are going to play yourself b4 d5 or maybe actually you can try to think about this order of moves let's say i'm going to play something random h4 b4 knight e2 and instead of the d5 right away because d5 e5 still is a closed position and white is attacking here at the king side you might have access to e5 and d5 i'm sorry so this is an interesting order of the moves not saying exactly here it's working but it's definitely worth to think about so something like g5 or d4 or maybe some ideas to knight e4 f takes and then d4 bishop e4 rook c8 a double attack on c2 and h1 those are the typical ideas in the line uh, so white has to push most likely g5 knight h5 and what i like about this position it's uh no longer it means that you have to push b4 and d5 now you have access to f5 so let's say white is playing something like uh, knight e2 with the idea to play knight g3 force you to open the h line and now you play f5 I really like this move uh, suddenly you are opening the f file not the d file and i think this is an excellent position for black you want probably to position the pawn on e5 to take away some central squares and just organize some counterplay at f file position the bishop on c6 and yeah i'm just just enjoying a good game I think it's rather rather easy but again i think one of the one of the rules here is that you don't you don't play d6 you keep this pawn on d7 because the pawn on d7 is easier to defend than on d6 and on d6 you're limiting your bishop 
And if ever you're gonna play b4 with a pawn on d6, obviously this pawn on b4 is gonna be under attack by the queen or the bishop or whichever piece. And you're eyeing at the right time to play b4, d5, but it doesn't mean you have to do this uh, at all costs. So this English attack, it's wouldn't say uh, really, really that dangerous. So the most tested continuation, the main line, is queen f3. And after queen f3, there's so many continuations. So I'll just tell you the opportunities which you have. And uh, somebody actually said it to me, that queen f3 is considered to be the most dangerous continuation for white. Because white is aiming for a quick long castle and uh, push g4, g5, and uh, maybe at the right time he's also willing to play queen g3, force you to trade queens, and then just enjoy a slightly a slight positional advantage because he has the h file and you don't. But to be honest, I, I've never really found such a line where white is really crushing black. And black usually has quite a, quite a dynamic game. So we can go for the main line, and the main line is knight f6, long castle, knight e5, here, and b5. This line had quite a surge of popularity in, which year was it, 2015-16, which is incidentally when I started to play Cecilia and Taimanov. And for some reason, people don't play this right now, but... I fail to understand why exactly. Yeah, maybe among the top GMs there is some uh, knowledge they're using the super com supercomputers and it's been proven that this line is unplayable. For example, like I recently read that uh, Sicilian Dragon is no longer playable. But people still play it, right? So here after b5 you're threatening to play b4, f4, here, and uh, there's a quite a common motive, which you should know, that after e5, we are happy to take this bishop. And as soon as white is pushing e5, very often you have an intermezzo move b5, b4. It's very, very important. Otherwise, you're just busted. I mean, if you don't have this move, you have nothing else here. Knight e5 is a, posi a positional resignation. Knight g4 loses something after queen f3. So knight g8 is something you don't want to do. So this is why there is a move b4. And after e takes, b takes, you're enjoying an excellent position with two bishops. And if white here plays knight e4, you just take bishop b7, rook c8, bishop e7, long, short castle, and excellent game. So actually white, I think, here is already worse. So that's it. I mean, it's so easy to get a worse position with white. Because he's missing the dark sword bishop. So after knight g4, uh, the main move is bishop g1. And I remember I played this line. Was it the last time I played it? Uh, yeah, I don't remember. Because I've been trying various continuations here ever since. And for some time, Sicilian Taimanov is no longer my only weapon. I've been playing also e4, e5s quite a lot, the first move. So... I'm also trying to uh, switch, uh, to make some changes in my theory, add something new for a variety. Yeah. So back in 2016, I think I played this, I was playing against uh, French grandmaster Romain Edouard. And back then, in 2016, when this one was very, very popular, uh, the only move was bishop g1. So um, in the game he played bishop d2 which was a big surprise to me the game is in the database uh of chess base i'm pretty sure it's annotated by remain edward himself so it was quite a funny game because i made a draw without four pawns <laughs> in opposite color bishops it was quite a scenic final position and uh here after bishop d2 or bishop g1 it doesn't matter your typical idea is to play b4 and h5 so, for example, for example, bishop d2, here, h5, 
fixing the knight's position on g4. We want to take the pawn on e4. Yeah, I mean, e5 probably we already want to take this bishop on d2. So this is why bishop d3 here. Some ideas as bishop d7 might arise. This knight on a4 will feel lonely. This was a game between, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Fabiano Corana against uh, Samuel Shankland. I don't remember which which tournament was it. Maybe it was United States Championship. I don't remember. Maybe it was Bundesliga. I don't remember. Uh, something like 2018 and, or 19. So it is quite a quite a sharp game. And uh, after knight h6, yeah, computer obviously says you have to take on b4, but the rising position is totally not clear. So for example, the game, what, what happened in the game? Corona played b3 here, here. And the game is super super sharp. Yeah, g4 ignore the pawn on g4 and this is how the game progressed and it ended with a draw. It was quite a fantastic dynamic game and somehow the opponents they found found the possibility to make a draw. I'm not going to show it until then. You can find it in the database. And uh and this is quite a forced line actually. So I'm quite surprised there's so few games uh, here, after bishop d2 again, um, bishop d2, b4, here. Okay, knight a4 is not forced, right? I mean, you could play knight b1, but the knight on b1 is uh, totally misplaced. I mean, after knight b1, I can, I can still play h5. h5, bishop d3, d5, e5, knight e4, takes, takes. Why this position should be bad for me? Bishop b7, rook c8, what is this knight doing there? I just don't understand. I mean, at some occasions, maybe I can actually sacrifice this pawn on e4 because I have a very good uh, light square bishop on the long diagonal. I mean, why not? But probably I would like to keep this pawn. So knight a4 feels like uh, uh, a mandatory move, fighting for some squares here. But it's jump, it jumps under bishop d7 threat. So we are playing h5 here. Okay, maybe maybe e takes on d5. I don't know, but the knight on d5 is gonna really look great, right? Here, this is forced. Takes takes, and here was this uh, possible improvement by Karana. Bishop takes on b4. Hi, Ultra Koyomi. I'm sorry, not not here. I apologize. H3 here and Bishop b4. Yeah, Bishop b4 takes here. Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, rook of eight here and bishop d7. So, you know, I'll tell you honestly, the rising position... Yeah, we are going to get to it. Why the bishop is not on g1? I'm just showing you this bishop d2 idea, which is less played, but which is supported by the engines. But I think the rising position is super unclear. So after bishop d7, the computer says something like the main move is a3. Yeah, a3, bishop a3... And what was the move here? I mean, just don't remember. But you can analyze this with an engine to a great depth and see if you like the results. I think it's rather interesting. So it already will take quite a skilled player for white to get to this position. So bishop g1 is the alternative. And after bishop g1, again we are playing h5. Nothing changes e5 b4 and again this motive of e5 b4 uh i don't know i don't know it depends i mean if the opponent is playing queen f3 there is a very big chance you're gonna get this get this position because this is pretty much the only line okay there is another line which i'm gonna show you so after b4 here and this is the game karyakin against karana I think so. It was London Chess Classic 2018, maybe. I, I don't remember. I don't remember which year. I, I'm, I'm saying, uh, showing all of this from memory. I just copy paste the, the PGN, of course, but uh, I don't see the annotation who was playing against who. And uh, yeah, I think it was something like this. So here, here. 
yeah h3 is always uh knight h6 and knight f5 so it's not even clear if white should actually play this h3 knight e4 this was the game this was the game between Karyakin against uh, Karana f5 and a5 a4 is threatening at some point and the game is super wild yeah h3 was a mistake because of the h4 and uh, Karana very quickly took over and won a wonderful game and black is already uh, a winning position but and this was Karyakin right so he misplayed this position for white so so this is why I'm actually quite surprised it's not being uh, tested at the highest level and um, what was else here yeah after h3 I mean everything else makes little sense so you want to play b4 okay I think there was also bishop d3 at some moment yeah bishop d3 bishop b7 I don't see what changes it so I'm still willing to play b4 here and b4 again uh, it's essentially the same yeah, this is essentially the same and um, I'm threatening to play at the right time Bishop c6 to cause some problems yeah maybe it is possible to play something like this h3 Knight h6 um I don't know Queen here maybe and what is what is this position yeah I did not did not analyze it did not analyze it very very thoroughly maybe actually you can think about some ideas for example i'm just improvising right now some some ideas is a five i mean why not to return with return with the knight on f7 and secure the king side this also weakens the pawn on f4 the knight on d5 is looking really great the knight on a4 is not doing much but the computer it supports white this is what's interesting i mean if somebody is preparing heavily with a computer Kabir says 0 0.4, 0 0.5 for white. Uh, what about the 5 instead of queen of 2? You mean here? Yeah, I mean, but what about this pawn on e5? I think you just lose it, right? Something like queen e5 or knight e5. You just take it. So it's not easy. Uh, maybe maybe something like this. h3 here and then f5. Yeah, I, this, this could be possible, of course. Yeah, I'm not sure what is the arising position after this one. And you still need to evaluate the consequences. For example, after... I'm just sh showing you the position without an engine. So something like bishop c6. You need to understand what is going on here. So let's say I'm taking, taking. This knight is feeling not, not so great. b3. And what is this? Maybe you can take at the right time. Yeah, I don't know. I'll tell you honestly. Yeah, h3, knight h6. There's so many combinations. The position is super, super sharp. But um, what else white has here instead of this? So after long castle, knight e5, queen g3, b5, you are threatened to play b4. I mean, okay, he can play f3, of course. But this poses no problems for you. You play just bishop b7, Rook c8 threatened to play b4. Maybe at the right time you play bishop b7, sacrifice this pawn, and just b4, d5, everything goes forward. I think this is a really great position. So white is feeling sort of um, obliged to play f4. That's, that's the point after this b5. Okay, I mean, technically... Ah, there was this also, this drawish line, wasn't it? No, wait, not here. Where was it? Bishop f4. Was it here? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Long castle, knight e5, queen g3, b5. I don't remember. Was it knight e5? Ah, sorry. I mean, there was this theoretical draw, drawish line, which was played first, I believe, by Morozevich. Let me try to remember it. I'm, my memory is lagging a little. So it was long castle, knight e5 here, here. Ah, it was bishop b5. Takes, knight b5, here. But this is, a, again, a forced line. Something you can learn very quickly. It was, again, quite popular back in 2016, 15, when this line was first discovered. Bishop f4, d6. Looks super scary, right? 
Rook d6. Anything else doesn't work. Rook d6 here. Looks like a crazy line, but it's actually a forced line. <laughs> Rook f5, yeah, but again. I don't know if there is much to see here, but it leads inevitably to a position where uh, White's attack fades and he has some compensation, but clearly not enough to claim an advantage. I don't remember who was Morozevich playing against. Yeah, there was some GM battle in this game. At the club level, this line is, of course, completely... Uh, you think so? Where is an improvement? Uh, the only improvement I saw Supposedly, one improvement in, in the database was that Maxime Shelograph, he played a3. <laughs> and then after bishop b7 against uh, Petala Hare Krishna, I think, it was a Bundesliga game, maybe last year, yeah, maybe last year, he played a3. And the game progressed after bishop b7, now there was a sacrifice. Yeah, and the point was, this is the point. Our bishop is messing uh, with this b6 control square. So here, obviously, if white is sacrificing on b5, takes takes here, there is no bishop b6, and that is the difference. So he has to go for bishop f4, d6, rook d6, knight h5. One single line, what you have to learn. Maybe two. But here was this idea that he played a3, bishop b7. Now he took on b5. Yeah, now we cannot take on b5. There's this threat to take. And this led to quite a fascinating game. Which I'm pretty sure is not even forced. There's more than one condemnations here. And uh, I don't remember how did they finish. Did Maxim actually won this game? But uh, Hare Krishna was doing really well. In the opening and at some moment he misplayed something so it was quite quite an interesting and uh and a dynamic game so this is why i'm actually quite surprised that people are not playing this and they're playing uh knight of instead which sometimes is also getting crushed i'm the gym repertoire series can you tell me the book i obviously i have not read the books because tell you honestly i mean i have no time i have no time so Pretty much all of the GMs probably will say, say the same because we have no time. So there's so many books, there's so many information. So you need to purchase the, this book and you, you need to study this. And uh, it takes away... Ah, he mentioned this, right? Yeah, this is this is the book which I was uh, mentioning you. Yeah, the quality chess, Antonius Pavlidis. He's my teammate in, in Bundesliga. Very nice guy. <laughs> he told me about writing this book. Yeah, and uh, I was asking him... How much effort did it take for him to write the book? And he said, I mean, pfft. it took him forever. Yeah, because uh, they were the, uh, the publisher was uh, pressuring him very, very hard and uh, to deliver really great quality book. And I believe it is because quality chess is known by excellent books. And uh, yeah, so I have not read the book, tell you honestly. Uh, what does he say in the book? Can you, can you uh, say to me? Because he is also advocating for Sicilian Taimanov. And he is also, of course, an avid fan of the Sicilian Taimanov from Black. So probably I should actually purchase the book. Or ask him a free copy, I don't know, and just to find the time to read it. But you wouldn't imagine, I mean, how many books do you have to read? <laughs> I just, just no time. Totally no time. There's so much information around. And uh, uh, we just have to pick what to study um yeah so what i wanted to say is that this is of course a super interesting line at uh, the main line but there's other alternatives as well yeah which, which i like yeah you of course you can check it but there's other alternatives as well which i've tried it myself so for example here after knight of six long castle you can take on d4 i once tried it against uh, uh, leading estonian grandmaster kaido kolots in a very important game, I lost it. Yeah, because I was super confident I'm going to beat him even with black. <laughs> and uh, I went uh, for a total massacre. And I got massacred in the end. And the point is, white has to take with the bishop. Because rook takes on d4, you just play b5. 
and e5 gives nothing because of bishop b7. Again, I might be again the same idea to play b4 intermezzo, which is a classical idea in the Sicilian Tamano. With the e4, e5, there might be this move b5, b4. But I'm not saying always, but there might be an occasion when you can do this. Uh, but uh, he has to take with the bishop. Here, here, here. The threat is to play bishop g4, h3. What was it? H. No. Now, okay, yeah, it was it was b5, and again it was a game by Caruana. <laughs> yeah, Caruana is always there. I mean, he's playing uh, Sicilian Tavmanov with white and black, and uh, yeah, this is a knight, uh, this is a Sicilian knight of structure. Yeah, this is not this is not the same structure, but it is quite an interesting and again neglected line uh, for some reason. And again, Bishop g5 gives nothing really. Bishop e7, and now we reached a Sveshnikov system, right? So knight, knight d5, bishop g5, queen d8, bishop e6, and totally fine. <laughs> yeah, so I what was the main line here? Not, I, I think it was a3, and in the game against Kaido, I think I played not h6, I think I played rook b8, didn't I? Yeah, rook b8 here, or was this an analysis? Yeah, I think this was analysis. I'm just trying to remember what was my game. Ah, it was like this. Yeah, I played I played h6, g4, rook b8, threatening to play b4. And he played, I think, knight e5. Or maybe not. I might be mixing up. I mean, you can, of course, check in the database the game. Kolots uh, makes sense. That's my game from... A zonal tournament 2016-17 I don't remember and uh, uh, I lost it in a Baltic zonal tournament whichever uh, stage it was it was quite interesting I was doing really well and again I was quite confident this is a good line although I lost it but it's so few so few games have been played here I believe uh, totally neglected line it is so 94 is totally interesting and again it's What's what's the uh, what's great about this line? This is a forced line. It's forcing matters. So there is no way White can uh, avoid it. Yeah, a3 and h6. Yeah, this was my analysis, which I did some some long time ago, and I was trying to prove that White has advantage here, but it it wasn't obvious. I'll tell you this. This was one interesting line, which I have played myself only once or twice. Then against me, I was playing this time this time with White, Maxim Matlakov. He played against me in a blitz game, I think. He once tried against me. Knight e4, here, e5, here. What did he play? d6, h3. I think he played bishop e6. Yeah. g4, here here because i i need to watch out for some bishop a2 ideas i'm not so sure if i actually have to lose this pawn but okay in a blitz it feels safer to play three and it went like this i was playing with white so i got quite a huge advantage but i lost it since it was a it was a blitz game it was 95 and yeah Against Kaido, right? Yeah, I, I don't remember. It. I remember approximately where the game went, and he sacrificed really in a great way a piece. And uh, it was supposed to be a draw, but yeah, I just didn't find it. So this is quite an interesting alternative as well. And there's one more. There's not one more, actually two more. Uh, you can still play here h5. And uh, you know what? This uh, e6 is soft. <laughs> you mean Sicilian e6 is soft? No, I don't think so. I think Sicilian e6 Taimanov is quite a dynamic. Uh, quite a dynamic. Uh, English with queen e1. I don't think I had a queen e1. I had an English with queen d2 and f4. That's probably where I know the least. <laughs> because this is the least played line, pretty much. I've met so many times the classical bishop e3, bishop e2, short castle. So many times queen f3... 
uh, sometimes queen d2 f3, but so few times queen d2 on f4. Uh, e6 pawn was weak in the line. Ah, okay, okay, I see. But where's the English with queen e1? I'm not so sure there is any queen e1 ideas. At least I, I don't remember, to be honest. So anyway, there's also a very interesting move H5, which is one of the main moves in pretty much every single Sicilian Taimanov. Uh, Sicilian Nidov. Every single Sicilian Nidov, it always comes down to the move H5. I mean, you have to play H5 in order to stop G4, G5. And the same rule probably can be applied also for Sicilian Taimanov. So just think about it. It's just interesting. You just stop any H3, G4 ideas. For the time being and uh, you're obviously not rushing with short castle so what was the line here yeah knight c6 queen g3 is probably a slight mistake i think so takes takes and knight g4 that's the idea so and white is losing this bishop and he cannot do this um yeah so after h5 knight c6 again we take with the b pawn and the rising position is quite sharp. Something like rook b8, maybe rook b4, try to get to this pawn. Let's say white is playing. Yeah, bishop e2 I think is necessary because again, queen g3 is met by knight g4. The same idea. So white is either playing bishop e3 or h3. And probably bishop e2 with the intention to play queen g3 next move. Try to force the queen trade. And he has supposedly some pull at the h file. But you don't have to trade queens. And you can just play this position. So, for example, some ideas, again, like I said, rook b4, e5, bishop e6. Uh, I remember I, I played this line constantly when I was playing this uh, banter blitz cup. The first round against uh, German GM Niklas Huschenbett. And I was always misplaying it. Always. <laughs> In the blitz game, somehow he always managed to put a bishop on c4, bishop on b3, but still I was scoring really well because the rising position is super, super sharp. Uh, bishop on f8, uh, it's not doing much at the moment, but I might ask a second question. Where is the queen g3 going? What is it doing there on g3? It's not. I mean, it's not clear, right? Yeah, I could sacrifice actually this pawn on g7. For example, something like... Let's say I'll just make some random moves. Um, whatever. Let's say f3. I can just play bishop e7 right away. Uh, you cannot really take. Because that's at least a draw. Oh, it's not a draw. Wait a second. It's queen f4. I thought that's a draw. But even this position looks uh, so unclear to me. Here. What is the arising position? I don't know. Knight e5. Oh, there's knight g4. Yeah. So you cannot really do this. And if you don't take this pawn, I just maybe you can fix it with g6, e5, bishop e6, queen a5, rook b2, queen b4. I mean, there's so many ways how you can, yeah, how you can uh, get a very exciting and a dynamic game. But again, I think the rule is this. I mean, if you have played a6, you should take on c6 with the b pawn, not with the d pawn, because with the d pawn you are suffering. For example, something like bishop e2, e5, queen g3, and I don't see where, where's your active game. Something like f3, b5, b4, there's no threat, no nothing. You don't have the b file for you. So this is why I'm advocating for b takes on uh, c6. Right. Um, uh, yeah, back in 2016, yeah, back in 2016, uh, there was quite a popular line, which again, <laughs> which was first played by, can you guess it, by who? Caruana, of course. Uh, I think it was game um, Kramnik against Caruana or Caruana against Kramnik. Again, I don't remember. They were one of the first pioneers in, in this line. And there was a move bishop d6. Uh, so bishop d6, it was quite trendy. Uh, back in 2016, so I have, some, I have some old analysis, and I've not played the line ever since. And the point is, I want to position the bishop on e5, and I want to stop queen g3 from happening. So this is a super interesting line. And the main line goes 
long castle bishop e5 I might position the knight either on f6 or knight e7 so white could play played out in a number of ways knight c6 I don't think that's dangerous bishop d4 takes takes and knight f6 I think I played this line more than once one blitz game against Shirov I think it's even in YouTube I think so I got an excellent position I got a winning position but I lost it anyway <laughs> but it doesn't strike me as a as a dangerous position for black although I mean white is pushing at the H file um, so uh, let me go back uh, the main move here is uh, after uh, bishop e5 queen e2 and the game I'm I'm trying to remember who was it I think it was Kramnik against Korana I think so there was uh, quite quite a famous game at least back then Knight of six was played and we found an improvement uh, we were doing um, uh, wait a second what was it Bishop e5 yeah g3 is more accurate uh, knight e7, queen e2, here, here, takes, 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 and e5. And the backstory of this is we had a team camp, Team Latvia. We had a team camp before the 2016 uh, World Chess Olympiad in, in Baku. And several grandmasters obviously were in the team. And we were working on this line in a camp. And since this was quite a popular line back then, uh, we had an excellent result in our match against Netherlands. Nikita Meshkov beat uh, Benjamin Bok in a really great game, which was our preparation. And then the next day, we had to play against uh, Azerbaijan. And uh, the funny thing is that uh, I had to play against Rolf Mamedov. He had never played the line before with white because he is mainly as far as i could remember i think it, he is mainly a lapping player i had never played this line before with black but we exactly repeated this exactly the same game so that was a very high level of uh, preparation so the coaches were working non-stop and finally i managed to make a draw i'm gonna write it in the in the chat it was mamedov nexans 2016 uh, Baku Chess Olympia, so that was a highly contested uh, opening line back then. But I think I think it's still quite an interesting weapon to consider against Queen F3. This Bishop D6, Bishop E5, especially at the club level. So it would really take for White to be a very good player to come up with this idea that after Bishop D6, Long Castle, Bishop E5, that he has to play G3, Queen E2, and F4. It's not obvious. So a club player might just play something like bishop e2. Yeah, bishop e2, knight f6, and you already have an excellent game. So that's at least the backstory. So what I'm missing there, I don't know, let me think about a6, queen f3. Um, okay, by the way, there's a funny little sideline <laughs> you can use for blitz games. Just, just boom. By the way, this is something what computers suggests uh, one of the top moves at a low depth. And when you're low, playing on a uh, very low time, some accelerated the time control, it might be just a playable game. Of course, in a serious game, probably you don't want to do this. So the idea is after b takes an a3, knight e5. That's the idea. To play queen c3 and that's a double attack. But after bishop a3, long castle knight e5, Queen g3, queen c3, boom. Uh, after b takes, uh, what was it, knight g6, I think, uh, black is worse. But uh, there's some dynamics, at least in this position, because after something like knight b3, knight f6, I don't remember already. Yeah, I mean, it is possible to misplay this position for white. Well, it's not really that bad. You're not losing right away, it's just slightly worse. But I mean, this bishop a3 as a surprise weapon, of course, you can try to use this. But uh, <laughs> don't really count on it too much. Okay, um, I think I covered most of them. Yeah, in some lines. Yeah, in some lines. I apologize. My knowledge is rusty. 
definitely because I I last did a huge overhaul in Taman a couple of years ago. So I have some some knowledge what happened recently. So this is why I probably would need to sit down and uh, update my knowledge. For example, against this uh, uh, this line queen d2 on f4. It's it's quite a rare line. Probably uh, this is something I need to add something new in those lines. But the bottom line is I think that Cecilia and Tamanov is is quite an interesting and a dynamic opening to play. And uh, comparing to uh, Cecilia and uh, Khan. I think you have so much more dynamics and the uh, arising uh, variations they are very much structure based so you can always find a way around so if you feel the positions if you feel the rising positions and the structures so you can feel it, improvise it and uh, and avoid some nasty surprises yeah so I would be very happy to answer some questions if they are maybe I, I missed a line somewhere so I think we covered uh, bishop e3, queen f3, we had something, bishop e3, queen d2, long castle, a castle, but not so much, yeah, I probably need to update my knowledge there, so bishop e3, bishop e2, short castle is the old main move, which everybody knows, who has studied the book, at least once, and any g3, bishop g2 ideas, I've never really treated as dangerous move but um, I mean of course it is completely playable any questions I'll be happy to answer <clears throat> how many of you actually are playing the Tamanov or you are thinking about playing Tamanov <laughs> if you're thinking about <laughs> you're welcome if you're thinking about playing it seriously i would suggest you to get a book definitely because it's not enough uh doing the two hour stream and oh okay yeah but i mean the queen of three there's so many ways how you can play it out again right uh, what was the reason why did you why did you drop it okay pavlidis yeah semkov i don't know semkov's book i i know delchev's book which is quite old already by today's standards. But what you have to understand about the books. Let's say you're purchasing a book. Let's say it's uh, released in 2020. You have to be ready. It's outdated already. I mean, that's the general rule. Once the book is released, it's already outdated. So, for example, it's 2020 book. It's pretty much 2018 theory. So, there's no games in 2019. So, a lot of time goes for editing and proofreading and checking the line so there's no more new theory incoming and pretty much the, the book was written two years ago if something groundbreaking happened in those two years it's not going to be in the book so this is why again i think it's quite important for you to focus on the fact that you have to always i mean trust but verify it's very simple trust but verify so for example i've read uh Negi's book uh, for the Sicilians, excellent books, really. But even he is making mistakes. There's a couple of lines I found mistakes in the lines because he said this is a great line. I switch on the engine, the engine finds threefold repetition. <laughs> How come this is a great line, right? So you have to check everything, of course. Uh, yeah, but the question is, what? Why? Why did you drop? Okay, player Kipo. Why did you drop the Queen of Three? What was the reason? Please, hope maybe I can try to convince you to play it there's also by the way this uh, the big theory started i believe it move h5 right away which was championed by anish giri <laughs> that already should be something i mean it tells you something if giri who is such a peaceful player supposedly because <laughs> he doesn't mind draws uh if giri is playing h5 so this means that theory should be in a good state here right yeah, so h5, what was the line here? h5, castle, knight e5, queen g3, I don't remember. Maybe h4, was it? Yeah, and for some reason, um, black is avoiding this uh, knight of 6. Let me check it with your writing there. This is the game Vashela Graf against 
Mashiava graph against uh, Hare Krishna from 2019. I don't think it should be in the book because they played it like last year and the book was released last year. I think so. Uh, so, but I'm pretty sure the line you're mentioning a3, bishop b7, bishop b5, rook c, bishop blah, 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 blah. bishop four, blah, blah, blah. rook d2. But if you switch on the engine, you'll see there's more than one continuation. It's not the only one. So I'm pretty sure, uh, knowing how GMs, especially top GMs, they're thinking, I'm pretty sure that a3 is not a groundbreaking discovery how to destroy this seal and time I'm pretty sure it's just for one game. Uh, what does Antonius uh, say in the book? I mean, I, I have not read it. Does he mention A3 is the new main line? It doesn't really strike me as, ma as the new main line. I'm pretty sure the new main line is this. I mean, not the new main line, but the main line. Is knight of 6, castle, knight e5, queen g3, b5. Unless, of course, he has found a refutation for this. Yeah. Actually, I would, I would have to uh, speak with him about this one. Is there really a refutation in this line? Maybe, maybe there is. I, I wouldn't know. I have some old analysis. I have not played this line for some years, because, like I said, I'm. Uh, this, this is so he is he's trying to make it work, right? And also, I think so. It's it's working. It's working because I have some analysis there, quite old ones, and I checked what's, yeah, what what has happened recently, and I just don't see any refutation of this line. It's it's working, and there's this game. Between Karyakin against uh, Karana, it's also working for Black, and actually Karana won with Black, so uh, so I don't know, I did not get the impression that it should not work. Okay, right. Okay, guys, I mean, if there are no more questions, I'm happy to finish, at least try to finish. Yeah, I'll need to update, of course, my knowledge about Queen D2, yeah. So bishop e3, a6, queen d2. Uh, there's, of course, some sidelines with b5, bishop b7. You can think about this one, but yeah, this was the problematic line. Yeah, knight of 6 and f4. So the question is, what happens here? Maybe I should get Pavlidis' book. <laughs> right, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, yeah of course, uh, quite an important element in operating preparation is to be unpredictable. So if you're playing the same line over and over and over, pretty sure your opponent is going to come up with an advantage. I'm pretty sure. I mean, it, you cannot play the same. I mean, there's a handful, handful of players in the world, for example, who are playing the same lines in the Grunfeld and the Neidorf. Probably you know who I'm talking about, right? <laughs> um, they're playing the same lines, and they're somehow keeping it alive. But I think you just need to change something. So this is why I just threw at you various ideas, various uh, possibilities that you can use for black. I think it's a great idea to try to mix it. Try this move, then try this move, then try this move, then again repeat, uh, go back to the first move. I have your own analysis. Um, uh, Bishop d3? Uh, uh, Bishop d3 where? Ah, you're saying about this line. f3, f4? Bishop d3. Oh, he doesn't he doesn't recommend knight a5 then. I see. I see. Yeah, knight a5 is the main move here. At least I, I believe so. And uh, you are saying he's recommending b5. b5, a3, bishop b7, e5, knight g4. I don't think all of that is forced, of course. Knight c6, it doesn't feel like a forced move to me, but okay, knight c6, d takes, bishop g1. No, this is a good position. White should be a bad position. White cannot easily make a castle because this is going to be a weakness at some moment. Either a5, b4. Doesn't strike me as super dangerous. So I think something critical should be something like this. Knight g4, bishop g1, not taking on c6. But again, I mean, I think it's a good position. Yeah, probably I also need to investigate myself. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, again, then, of course, I recommend buying his book. <laughs> I haven't read it, but I know the guy. He's a very nice guy. And I know how hard he worked on the book. 
So Antonius Pavlidis, uh, Sicilian time off. He's not paying me for advertising, not worry. <laughs> I just know it's the most recent book. And uh, yeah, okay, uh, I'm finishing. So that was it. I appreciate you guys that you were here. And uh, my next stream, I think so, is going to be on Monday. I'm going to do some chess variants. And the next bootcamp, if nothing is going to change, is going to be... I don't know when. <laughs> no, actually, I, I was thinking about this. I thought it was next Friday, but next Friday I might not actually make it. Yeah, so anyway, I'll update my streaming schedule uh, at some time in my Twitch profile. Uh, so you can check it. Probably it's not going to happen today. Maybe in, in the weekend I'll find the time just to update the schedule so that you can find it. And uh, yeah, so there's one little thing I'd like to do. Let me check if somebody is... If somebody is online, we could raid. So what about a little raid? I would like to raid somebody. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. We could raid Lille Koridze. She is, uh, she is celebrating, I'm sorry, I should open probably, uh, she's celebrating the Twitch partnership and uh, she's playing some Blitz, so perhaps we could make a little array to her channel, say please hello her from me, be nice, and I appreciate that you were here, yeah, it was really fantastic. And a lot of questions, a lot of interesting lines. And um, I'll be seeing you in uh, one of my uh, next streams. Yeah, so let's let's wait for people to jump in. And uh, take uh, good care and have a great Friday. Yeah, you're welcome, you're welcome. Goodbye, bye-bye.